The new and potentially improved San Jose Sharks are ready to go for another season. And I'm hesitant to say improved because in the past two regular seasons, we've done very well for ourselves. The playoffs, on the other hand, an entirely different story. This entire offseason was surrounded with change, I guess we'll say. It was defined by change from the draft to free agency, and it's led us to have the team that we have now. And admittedly, I don't know how well this is going to go. We are going to find out. This is the squad as it stands and as we'll start the season. Timo Meyer, Tomas Hurdle, and Bjorkstrand, who we picked up as a free agent. Solid boost, solid fit for that top line. It's funny how well he and Marcus Sorensen work on that top line with this coach. But very intrigued to see what he can do on that one-year, very cheap, prove-it contract. And if you look at the caliber of players that he's with on that top line, he should do quite well. The second line should also be pretty solid. Evander Kane still there with Logan Couture and Zach Hyman, who is, again, basically our Kevin LeBanc replacement, just a little bit cheaper. And at the very least, we don't have to feel, I'd say, as bad about putting Zach Hyman on the third line. Now, 4x4 is potentially a bit much, although in trading LeBanc, it was just more trying to make the most out of his value. It's not that he was that bad of a player, it's just it didn't seem like it was a fit for what we have going on here. But Hyman is coming off of a 50-point season, so I'll be very intrigued to see what he can do this year. The third line... We find Patrick Marlowe, who's still on this team. Of course, Joe Thornton retired, trying to win with him if we can. Derek Stepan is the center on that line. I thought he might be a fourth liner. He's going to start on the third line for us, more of a penalty kill specialist. And Dylan Gambrell, who can hopefully work very well together with Marlowe on that third line. And the fourth line sees the return of an old face. I mean, we do still have Alex Troop, who I'm intrigued to see how well he can do this year. Barclay Goodrow, still the leader of that line, and Melker Carlson is back after a, you know, a departure last season. Cheap, one-year deal. Gonna see what he can do. That way we play some other guys down in the AHL, but we didn't want to overpay him after that first season. He goes to Tampa, a bit meh. We'll see what he can do for us this year, though. That plus three should be very helpful for the trio as well. Defensively, it's still a little bit shaky. It is. We have Tim Heed with Eric Carlson up top, Hayden Flurry with Brent Burns, and Ryan Merkley with Jeremy Waugh on the third pairing. Now, the reason for Tim Heed still being in the lineup, I mean, you'll see the AHL lines in a second. It does have to do with chemistry a little bit, but it also has to do with not exactly knowing who's going to be carving out a spot on this defense. Now, goaltending-wise, you'd like to think we'd be set. We have Frederick Anderson and Jordan Bennington both on one-year deals. I can't say cheap. That's a lot of money to be dedicating towards goaltending. But one of these two, you'd like to think, will carve out a spot, or it's just temporary, and we'll still be looking to find our replacements for Martin Jones. But as you get to the AHL, I do want to start off with the defense because Sandine and Bouchard, both not quite ready yet. We could go with them or we let them develop a little bit more in the AHL and call them up next year. You do have Mario Ferraro as well, who I know made the Sharks in real life this year, but still just a 77 overall. It's, it's tough because obviously we want to ice the best team we possibly can and that defense is looking a bit weak, but... It's looked a bit weak over the past two years, and we've still done relatively well, at least in the regular season. So I would expect there to be changes on the defensive side. The forward core is ridiculous. I mean, it's a mix of guys like Chekovic, Jonathan Dolan, Blitchfeld, and I mean, someone like Noah Gregor or Zach Gallant would be a pretty good fit for the fourth line at the NHL level. It's a good mix of decent prospects with veterans like Agostino, Jordan Wheel, who can help. Uh, Matt Nieto, I think, too, is a great example of who can help boost up that team. So that offense should be pretty ridiculous. Goaltending-wise is where we find Connor Ingram and Jesper Eliasson. Imond is going to be the healthy scratch. We also have Kornar as a healthy scratch. Sorensen and Simic, the healthy scratch, is uh, as well at the, at the NHL level. As Carlson has taken Sorensen's spot at least for the moment. 
So uh, that's why I said new at the very least. Not sure if it's improved. I still expect this to be a good team this year. There are some obvious question marks with this squad, but it's not a horrible situation to be in in that we have a lot of players that we can move around. We have a lot of options, room for creativity to make this team hopefully as good as it possibly can be. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the main thing, of course, too, Gustafson, uh, in terms of that goaltender for the future, sure, uh, whether or not Bennington or Anderson are the guys to get us to that point where he takes over, time will tell. But we'll see what happens this year. Draft pick-wise, we're looking pretty damn good after trading down quite a bit in this past draft. It's a good situation to find ourselves in, but obviously the hope right now is that we win. I don't know if we will. The good thing is I did remember to set up scouting too, so we are good to go. Uh, let's get this season underway. I think I showed you the coaching staff, but indeed, yeah, I, I think so. I, I often confuse it. I know I'm doing a lot of jump cuts with the draft to glory runs, so not entirely sure uh, what we had done, but I remember the last episode was us going through the entire offseason. So we'll see what associate coach or assistant coach Joe Thornton can do. He's on the coaching staff. That's what's important. And we'll see what this squad can do in general. I am hopeful that I don't choke to death. <laughs> oh, God. I am hopeful that this team doesn't choke to death either. If you really think about it, it's it's going to be interesting because we're at the point now where regular season is almost irrelevant, right? I mean, we've done well in the regular season the past two years. It's, for the love of God, can we start winning in the playoffs? That's what it comes down to. And that's something we have not done yet, and it's something we might not do if we keep seeing as many high-scoring games. Thankfully, we turn it around a bit in our last three. But, I don't know. Bjorkstrand, guys like that, really the key to success this year. What will we get from Tim Heed and from Hayden Flurry in particular on the defensive side of things? The good thing is we do have assets to go out and improve this team again if we need to all you know although then the debate will come up of just you know the the dad and off over nugent hopkins debate will certainly be there depending on what options are there and how uh, head first how head first we dive into the situation i guess that works you kind of get the point just how committed we are if we were to make trades as coaches are getting fired left and right and Vander Kane wants to talk about ice time. Okay. All right. Well, you're a second liner playing on the second line. I am, uh... Yeah, sure, buddy. Let's let's try to get, uh... Let's try to get a Vander Kane a few more minutes per night. He should be on the power play lines already. As Matt Nieto is healthy, we will stop before this game. No, we won't. Please stop the sim. Thank you. Hopefully Evander doesn't complain about that. That would kind of suck. As I still plan on keeping the top line the same. I mean, Kane, Couture, and Hyman on that second line have to be doing well if Couture is leading the way. Nine goals for Evander, 15 points for Couture. Okay, I mean, it's not, it's not too bad. For Zach Hyman. It's not amazing. Gambrell's doing all right. You know, I thought I want Patrick Marlowe in more of a defensive role. But I might bump up Dylan Gambrell. I want to see what he can do next to Couture and Kane. Although, I suppose I could bump up. Ah, if I were to bump up Kane, I'd have a line of all playmakers. Evander's staying on that second line. I mean, I want Maya Hurdle, Kane, Couture to work together. So where is Evander? Okay, that, wow, that's a plus five. Oh boy, Evander, you're asking me to break up a plus five, dog. That's, that's a big ask, but we'll do it. There you go, you're on the top unit. I don't think you want to be on the penalty kill. Four on four lines. Uh, you're there too, okay, he just, don't don't complain. You're on the top power play unit now. Just shut up, score goals, do what we need you to do. Because as we've already shown, uh, just because you have a contract and IRL are committed 
to the San Jose franchise moving forward, that doesn't mean much in this series. We need guys who are going to get the job done as we finish the opening month with a 7-3-3 record and begin November with back-to-back -back wins, 9-2 combined in scoring as the offense doing very well up until that game against the Detroit Red Wings. But all in all, looking pretty good. I did not break my promise. I literally gave you more ice time, kick rocks. I'm not going to apologize to persuade kick rocks. You're not riding the pine. That doesn't make any sense. Second line, when he's a second line center, or a second line winger, top power play unit. Oh my god, Zach Hyman, I am going to fire you into the sun. Persuade. Just persuade. I'm a team player. No, you're, you're not getting more minutes. You're not. Suck it up. Deal with it. Maybe you should have scored more. And Dylan Gambrell would never placed you. You ever think about that? Good. Good. You should you should have. You should have put more thought into that before complaining for no reason while you're on the top team in I am go Yeah, you better be sorry. You better be sorry. Oh God. Uh, let's let's go for ye old persuade. Oh my god, I'm not certain I can snap out of this, coach. You can! You can! Don't worry about it. As Derek Stepan is hurt, and that kind of sucks. Because, I mean, we're going to have to have Marcus Sorensen replace Patrick Marlowe, and then have Marlowe replace Stepan, because Marlowe's center. So, Yay for multiple steps. But at least Mark and Sorensen gets playing time, although that is not a good fit on that line. So guess what, Zach? You're going back up to the top line. Gambrell's actually doing really well, though. But he is the obvious guy to drop down to try and make that work. Otherwise, it would be like swapping True and Sorensen. Yeah, no. Let's just... Let's make that quick change. So, there you go, Zach. You can stop complaining. You have 15 points in 26 games. I'm okay with that. Again, you're more of our penalty-killing specialist, which we desperately need. So, it's projected to be a weaker draft class. Not all that worried. We're at 18-6-3 through how many games? It's the one thing that sucks is you can't control the, the standings. It just auto-scrolls. Hold on. We're almost there. Back to the Metro the Pacific. There we go. So we're on 39 points in 27 games. Top of the division. Let's keep going. I mean, we kind of know how players were doing. Logan Couture leading the way in points. Things looking really good for us right now. Although Evan Bouchard fracturing his jaw and missing a month kind of sucks. Mario Ferraro also hurt. So just when things look like they're going well, the Barracuda start falling to injuries. But we're on 21 wins already before getting our asses handed to us by the flyer six to nothing <laughs> it was all going so well Sorensen's still not bad man he's still not bad he is honestly too good to have as a depth option but he's also the perfect depth option because you know that he can play no matter where we need him to play as Dylan Gambrell we'll go back up to that top unit Let's take a look here, though. Timo Meyer, 36 points in 32 games. Tremendous. Tomas Hurdle, 29 and 32. Not too bad either. Bjorkstrand, 8 goals, 23 assists on that top line. Doing very well, considering we're paying him $2.2 million. Evander Kane, 18 goals in 32 games. Very good. Logan Couture doing well. Dylan Gambrell with 7 goals, 15 assists. Again, not that bad. Marlowe, eh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. I mean, a point every other game. Step on from an offensive standpoint just hasn't really been there yet. Hyman's doing all right. That fourth line, not exactly a bastion of offense, but it doesn't have to be. I kind of, even though Melker's doing the best on that unit, I kind of feel like he's dragging down the other two. Defensively, okay, that has to change. Yep, that has to change. Flurry and Burns have been okay. Wah and Merkley have been a tremendous pair. But Tim Heads, he's got to sit. He has to. So, Radim Simic 
Could be the choice, although first pairing defenseman Radim Simic, I, I understand the optics of that. I think my go-to call-up, I mean, it would probably be Rasmus Sandin. Nick Simone's now in. Oh, Sandin. You know, I'm going to go with Simic just for the moment. Because of the injury to Bouchard, and right now our depth in the AHL is a little bit weakened. So we're going to go with the ready replacement in Simic, and we'll look to make changes. Because we're going to want to test some of these you know, some of these things out with some of these players before we get towards the deadline. You know, just in case we want to make trades, we you know, should probably know with 100% certainty that we should be making those moves in the first place. I should have put Mario Ferraro back in the lineup, but... At this point, we're we're looking okay. Although an eight to nothing win over the Canucks certainly helps the optics, but then losing to them nine to two uh, does not. So as of January first, forty-two games in, fifty-seven points, and atop the Pacific Division, which is what you would hope for, and perhaps what you would expect defensively. Simic's been okay. I mean, he's a shutdown defender. Again, you would probably actually, let's take you out. Uh, I guess Bouchard's almost good to go as well. So, in terms of options, there is someone like Mario Ferraro, who is okay. Getting Rasmus Sandin, though, that opportunity, doesn't seem like the worst way to go. It really doesn't. So, let's bring Bouchard back in. Uh, he's, he plays relatively well with Simone. I think we're going to give Rasmus Sandin the chance because even though Simic's done all right on that top pair, we we can't run with that heading into the playoffs. That's a bit much. So unfortunately, someone's going to have to be someone's going to have to go. I think it, it's got to be Heed. I'd rather stick with Simic. So let's see if we can shop Tim Heed for anything right now. And if we can't, we'll probably try just putting him through waivers, which I don't think will work, but it's worth a shot. Although goaltending-wise, now we haven't checked the stats yet, and we will right now. Freddie Anderson has been okay. I mean, a 906 is a bit rough. Bennington only on a 907. So neither has exactly won me over at this point. I could move Coronar for the sake of a call-up. The reason I kept him, or I could just send him down, to be honest. You know, we might actually not have to make this move. Let me just see if I can send down Coronar. It'll piss him off, but again, we just re-signed him because we needed another goalie. So let's see if we can make this work, and we're going to give Rasmus Sandin a pretty good opportunity to succeed here as he'll be playing pretty much immediate top-line minutes with Eric Carlson, which is not a bad way to make your living. He's not a good fit on that top pair, but that's that's okay. Again, Flurry and Burns have actually struggled a little bit, but Merkley and Waugh have been amazing. So, you know, let's actually do that. Let's go Flurry, Carlson, Sandine, and Burns on that second unit, and we'll see how that works out for us. But right now, loving that third pairing. They've done very, very well. It's just, is Hayden Flurry the type of defenseman we want to trust for the top four? And can Rasmus Sandin prove that he's ready at this point? If not, obviously changes are going to have to be made. And we're going to keep an eye on the market for you know players that are available over the next few weeks anyway. So again, January 1st, we're looking good. That'll be the only change that we make for now. Let's see what happens over the next few weeks. Rasmus Sandin gets an opportunity. As Evan Bouchard's back to 100%, he might be getting an opportunity next. Although we'll see what he can do down with the Barracuda, now that he is the top defenseman on that team. As we have lost three, make it four straight games. Okay. We'll give it one more. If we lose this one, we're in trouble. And we didn't. Okay, what can we do against Carolina? Can we get a little bit of a bounce back? Another head coach has been fired. Chekovic is down to a concussion. Can we beat the Canes? 
Yes, we can. Can we beat the Blues? No, we can't. Can we beat the Jets before the totally not all-star break? No, we can't. All right, January has been a down month for us, for sure. We're still on 30 wins, which is solid. Still atop the division. But some concerns here at this point. Some concerns. First and foremost, the goaltending, in which Jordan Bennington has done very well. Frederick Anderson, not so much. Not so much. So, you know... Well, it would, I mean, his value should technically be down because he's having a rough season. I gotta be honest, I'm not totally against seeing what we could get for Freddie Anderson right now, especially when it comes to potentially picking up a goaltender, or a defenseman, I should say. Goaltending-wise, Connor Ingram is lighting up the AHL and could be a decent enough backup. So, you know, Freddie, buddy, uh, I am gonna, I'm gonna take a look at what's available. I am going to take a look at what's available. This is the one bright side to picking up a player of this caliber. As his value looks... Oh yeah, his value's down. It, it was a little bit higher than that, if I'm not mistaken. So that's good. I mean, it's working as it's supposed to. As there are offers. The only one is to take on the Louis Erickson contract, but we get a second round pick back in return. So, uh... Yeah, we're we're not we're not going to do that. So Anderson is safe for now. Honestly, he might be made a healthy scratch, and I might call up Ingram. So that's interesting. Uh, defensively, what do we have from Eric Carlson right now? We have a solid almost point of game efforts. Burns is still doing all right. Merkley's solid. Sandine hasn't done well. Waz still looking good. And how about Hayden Flurry? Flurry's been okay. Sandine hasn't worked. He'll be sent back down. Now it's a question of does someone like Nick DeSimone, uh, you know, is he given an opportunity, which he could be, not uh, saying that's the best option. Bouchard's been okay in the AHL. He hasn't been a massive uh, point guy for us. And then there's Mario Ferraro. So between DeSimone, Bouchard, and Ferraro, we're seeing okay numbers, but nothing overly ridiculous, which isn't that surprising. So when it comes to the defense, I mean, the obvious move is to use Frederick Anderson to make something happen. But there's no guarantees that that's going to work. So we still have a couple of weeks before we really start seeing a ton of trades pop up. What we're going to do is call up Connor Ingram. Defensively, we are going to try... Well, I mean, we just outright can drop Sandine. And I think Simic would clear. We're going to try to send down Simic. He should clear. And he did. So that's that's good. He'll be back up at some point. D. Simone is at least a defensive defenseman. That's what I'm thinking. You know, you pair him with Eric Carlson. How well will that work out for us? And then there's Bouchard. I'm gonna give Nick D. Simone an opportunity. I don't think Sandine and Bouchard are ready quite yet. We're gonna let them play out the rest of the season in the AHL. I don't think Ferraro is gonna be the guy either. So we're going to give DeSimone an opportunity. Pretty much guaranteed that we're going to have to go out and get a defenseman at some point. Hayden Flurry might be good enough to do the job for us, but I'm not entirely sure. So I think we're going to keep Flurry Carlson. Let's go DeSimone and Burns, technically. And then goaltending-wise, Jordan Binnington is going to get a run as the number one goalie. That's the only way to make sure that he is the number one. Uh, of course, obviously, otherwise we would have to deal with turning off auto-rotate. As defensively, let's get one Rasmus Sandin back into this lineup. And goalie-wise, it's going to be Eliason and Iman. So I feel bad for Kornar, but he's going to be behind the two younger goalies that still have 
a better chance. Coronart might end up hitting backup levels, but I'm not too worried about that. So, it's unfortunate for him. But if we do end up moving Freddie Anderson, he'll be of a little bit more importance. So, we have hit that all star break, the totally not all star break. Let's see what happens here over the next two to three weeks as we take on New Jersey. The Joyzy. Alex True goes down to a concussion, so Sorensen will replace him on the fourth line as we beat the Devils but lose to the Sens. We beat the Bruins in a shootout. We beat the Habs in overtime. I think I set us up to sim just one more game against the Islanders. That is a win as well. So looking pretty good off the back of those games. Sorensen didn't fit in too well on that fourth line, but that's okay. Again, there are still potential changes we could make. How's Flurry doing with Carlson? Fine. D. Simone hasn't worked. It's only been five games, but that hasn't worked. So the only other real attempt that can be made here, uh, number one, if we lose D. Simone to waivers, so be it. He's not uh, that important of a guy to us. How's Bouchard doing again down in the AHL? He's looking all right. And then Ferraro is also okay. I'm going to give Mario Ferraro a little bit of time. De Simone cleared waivers, which is shocking. But we're going to see what Mario Ferraro has to offer. Not expecting it to be much. Again, we're probably even going to take a look at defensive options here within the next week. But we're going to give Ferraro the opportunity. We're going to put him with Carlson. I really want to keep Wah and Merkley as that third pairing because they are killing it right now. And we'll make further changes if need be. So we'll get Simone back in there. And we'll just roll with that. That way we get the plus. And we're going to see what Ferraro can do over these next four games or so. It's an earlier deadline day this year. Chekovic is back. I'm not going to worry about getting him back into the lineup just yet. Because there will be changes afoot. So we lose to the Oilers. Detroit has put Brandon Dubinsky on waivers, which... Yeah, no thanks. No thanks. So we play Winnipeg. It's an overtime loss. Minnesota. We end up getting a win. So a 2-1-1 one one stretch. 36 wins. Let's sim one more game. This one against the Red Wings. Before we make a call here, as we have seen a trade, Dustin Bufflin on the move. He goes to the Leafs in a in a move that makes me somewhat regret having that much patience. Alex Steen also on the move as we lose to the Red Wings. So, waiting as long as I did to give Ferrar that extra game may have potentially cost us Dustin Bufflin. So, that's that could come back to haunt us. So, Ferraro has been okay, which isn't that surprising. I think Hayden Flurry's done well enough to carve out a spot at the very least. Having Flurry and Ferraro as depth options would be pretty good. Goaltending-wise, Bennington's been better than expected. Ingram's been alright. It's still probably worth seeing if we can get anything for Freddie Anderson. If we can't, then so be it. But it's still probably worth it. I mean, he hasn't been that great. I mean, rolling with Anderson and Bennington certainly the better way to go. But Freddie just, you know, pedestrian, really average, flat-out bad numbers. We get a first and a third from Ottawa. Tyler Clevin as a prospect, or the Louis Erickson offer. I mean, I think that's just too good to pass up. I don't like signing players for the express reason of trading them immediately. That wasn't the reason to get Anderson. The reason to get Anderson was so that he'd do well for us. In the regular season, at least, he hasn't. So this is tough, because we could get a first and a third for Freddie, but in the playoffs, if he turns it on, we could win out. And I guess that's the issue right now, and what has to be decided is whether or not I think Anderson will turn it on in the playoffs. I mean, I, I understand that having Ingram and Kornar as a backup option to Bennington, if he's not getting the job done, kind of hurts. In theory, 
this deal does kind of say, okay, screw this season. Let's focus on, you know, seasons down the road because these picks aren't even until next year. I think we're keeping Anderson. We're prioritizing this year. I know he hasn't done well, but maybe it's just because the three games that we've seen from Ingram so far, they haven't been great. But I think we're going to keep Freddie Anderson. I think we are. So what I'd prefer to do now is still get rid of a goalie or two. Can I get anything for Coronar? Probably not. I feel bad. We have really good goalie depth right now, for AHL purposes at least. I think we're going to stick with Anderson. Defensively, we do need to see some change. Can I get anything for Tim Heed is my first question. The answer is yes. A fourth and a seventh, fourth and a sixth. We get Michael Stone, which doesn't sound great. A fourth and a sixth right now is still my preferred return. And that is pretty much all that we're going to get. So we will take the fourth and sixth from an Eastern Conference team, Tim Heed, being sent to the Philadelphia Flyers. That way we get something for him because he wasn't he wasn't sticking around. There was no way. And apparently I can get something for De Simone as well. A fourth, fourth and a seventh. Two fifths. I will take the fourth and a seventh from the Tampa Bay Lightning for Nick De Simone. Which works out pretty well for us, I would say. Is there any other depth option or just player in general? I'm still so torn on what to do with Anderson. But I feel like if Bennington can't get it done in the playoffs, Anderson has to. I think it would just be jeopardizing the goaltending too much to get rid of Anderson, even though he has good value. Is there anybody else there that I'm worried about trading? Not really. So, I mean, I feel like from a depth perspective, you know, trusting Ferraro, Flurry, ideally, or Simic for that matter. But Flurry ideally would be pushed into a depth role here if I can get the proper amount of defensemen that I want. In terms of forwards, Jordan Wheels having a really good season in the AHL, huh? Now, we might as well keep him. I mean, it doesn't really make sense to get rid of him and weaken the team. I mean, I guess really it didn't make much sense for that reason to get rid of Nick Simone, but I noticed his value was up. Probably should have kept him, let's be honest. I just kind of... It was too tantalizing of an option to get rid of him. So I'm not going to get rid of anybody else here. Let's see. Didn't mean to back out there. Let's see what's out there. Again, we're not restricted to just using the trade block, but it does help from a value perspective of being able to get someone for cheap if we use it. Now, the first thing I wanted to check was whether or not there were any goalies available. Vanisek's doing very well, but he's currently in Hershey. Yesman's not going to work. I just want to see if there are any other goalie options out there, because if there is, I'm not 100% opposed to moving Anderson. Lundqvist hasn't done well, so he will not be the answer. And then you had the likes of Condon, Allmark, Reimer. I'd rather go with Connor Ingram. Let's see, Colorado, we got nothing. Columbus with Arendelle. Yeah, I don't really think we're bringing him back. Dallas with Brassois, who has done well, but he's playing in the AHL again. Hadobin only played three games. Halak hasn't done well in Detroit this year. I love the, the Bruins tandem there, though. Koskinen, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Spencer Knight in Florida, but we have our goalie for the future. That makes no sense to give up value to try and get him. Jack Campbell hasn't done well. Cal Peterson's been playing in the AHL. Jonathan Quick has been brutal. Has eight wins on the year. Dubnik has been terrible. Oh, boy. And this is why I think... Wow, Corey Crawford's been garbage, too. This is... Carey Price is down to an 80. Oh, the poor guy. The poor guy. Um, this is why... I think keeping Anderson's a really good idea. Because goaltending isn't looking all that strong this year. Corey Schneider's down to a 73. Good God. So yeah, I think uh, I think we're safe. Pecorine hasn't been that good. 
it's interesting seeing where other goalies uh, who we had the option to pick up rather than Anderson. And it's interesting to see how well they've done. So goaltending-wise, we already know who we're sticking with here. In terms of skaters, though, David Perron. David Perron. Now, forward isn't exactly a big concern. But, uh, you know, picking up someone the caliber of David Perron wouldn't be the worst option. Giving up Ryan Merkley to get him, though, is not going to happen, or our number one goalie. So Perron's a bit too pricey. Granted, we do have some picks that we might be able to work into that. Maybe. Ish. Potentially. Possibly. I mean, I'm thinking of Merkley's value. Gregor. Ho ho. Almost had to accept that. Would have been a nightmare. I just want to see if technically I can get. I don't think I can get anywhere close. No. It would take like a Bjorkstrand. It would take an Ellison or a Perfetti. Which, uh, I don't know, man. Having to give up, like, Perfetti, Hewson, we would have to cripple our younger, uh, you know, our younger talent core that we just picked up for the most part. And to send them to another Western Conference team, I'm good. Thanks. So, yeah, we won't be working on a deal with St. Louis. Uh, Tampa. Anybody interesting? No. Chirana? Nope. Nick Robertson, noted defenseman. Louis Erickson's up to an 85. What? Louis, how have you done? Yeah, 36 points. How he's up to an 85, I have no idea. How did you do last year? 58 points last year. That would explain it, I guess. Still, with that contract, I don't understand it. Amazing. He would fit in well on the defense pair. Good to know. Amazing third line forward, Louis Erickson, huh? Tanner Pearson doing okay, but again, forward-wise, I don't really think we need that much help. We have options in the AHL. It's just defense. It's TJ Oshie's available, but again, don't really think I'm going to inquire. Billy Heinle was available. Silverberg. Yeah, I might regret not uh, not making a move sooner because now we don't have someone like Dustin Bufflin available. Col Hold on, Colin Miller. We might scroll back through this because I want to pay attention because someone like Colin Miller, that has to be due to morale. Like, there's no other answer, right? He can't actually be that bad. I can't imagine that, at least. Final year of his deal. Fits in on the second pairing. So he'd be playing probably with Brent Burns. I think uh, I think I'm just gonna mark down that name to remember that because I think that's our first option, and we'd just be banking on that being a morale issue. Calgary shopping Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Goodrow. Jesus. I mean, is there even an offer that would go through for Goodrow? Oh my God, there is. Gustafson and two firsts. You know. In theory, that would be worth it. <laughs> but, obviously, Gustafson's our go-to goalie for the future. In theory, that would probably be worth it, though, because it is Johnny frickin' Goodrow. But I'm sticking with that goalie. Backland, again, we don't really need. They're already shopping Kevin LeBanc, which is very surprising to me. But then you also have Brody and Giordano. I didn't mean to hit that button, son of a bitch. Let's go back to fine trade again. Gotta love it. But like I said, forward-wise, I mean, I know in theory, like, the top six isn't the strongest, but they've done pretty well. If we were to get anybody else, it would push Derek Stepan down to the fourth line, which isn't the worst thing I've ever heard. I guess there is some room for another forward to push Zach Hyman into a permanent third-line spot. It's not the worst idea I've ever heard of. It's just, you know, knowing that we need to prioritize defense first. But pushing Derek Stepan down to the fourth line isn't the worst thing I've ever heard of. How's Silverberg done this year? Not well. Derek Grant's killing the AHL. Good to know. Again, the uh, Coyotes didn't have anybody. The Bruins didn't have anybody. Kyle Okposo isn't great. But Colin Miller's still there. Calgary... I mean, again, they're shopping Goodrow, but there's no way I'm giving up Gustafson. There's just no way. 
But it is, he's actually having a down year, too. It is Johnny Goodrow. Backlund, TJ Brody has had a brutal season. Goodrow's a really good fit for the first line. Uh, unfortunately for Brody, he's just, I mean, he fits in well on the third line. I'd want him to be a fit for potential chem, you know, boosts on the first two pairings, so I don't think that's going to work. Matthew Kachuk's also being shopped. He really doesn't fit in with this team right now. It's just interesting that Goodrow and Backlund do. And then LeBanc does fit in, but on the top line, which is probably not where we'd want him. Because I just don't know if top line or Kevin LeBanc is going to be what works out for us. Giordano, again, I mean, gets the chemistry boost. So it might be a zero. In a way, it would still be worth it to pick up Giordano. But obviously, I am thinking of those potential chem boosts, too. And then Jankowski. Eh. Hasn't been that great. Would I wouldn't want him as a second liner. And then Cody Eakin. Doesn't really work out that well, either. And then Shattenkirk. That has to be morale-based, too. Has to be. Fits in on all pairings. Ooh, that contract, though. No thank you. Same with Derek Forbort. We'd only pretty much want Reynolds. So, I mean, Calgary is still really interesting, but those are some big-time moves. Carolina. Nobody that I'd want, really. No disrespect to Kyle Clifford. Chicago. Nobody I want. Nobody there either. Columbus. Jesper Faust. Hasn't been that great. Harrington's been playing in the AHL, and then Chris Russell was there, too. Good God. John Klingberg is available. Shockingly doesn't fit in on the top two pairings. Be a hell of a player, though. Bodker, Wenberg, who's apparently really valuable at this point. Perot and Dickinson. I mean, certainly options. You know, it's like, oh, Dickinson on the third pairing instead of step on. Like, that doesn't do too much for us. So, not really feeling anybody there. Detroit with Corey Perry. That could, uh,. That would be interesting. Top liner, Corey Perry. I'd probably rather bring back Kevin LeBanc. You have Ben Sherratt, Jan Ruda. It's not looking too good. Edmonton, still shopping the Nuge, who's had a great year, but I don't know if you saw how much he was getting paid. Yikes. Yikes. Even more of an expensive rental this year. You have Yanmark, Sam Gagne, James Neal. Gagne fits in on the third line. Special teams guy, potentially, too. If enough's a traitor going to Edmonton. Florida, nobody. Los Angeles, Derek Ryan. Who, nope. Dustin Brown, Stone. We have very few options if we want to try. Nemesnikov has to be a morale thing. He just hasn't been playing. We just don't know how good he is at this point. How much? He was on an expiring deal. And then Jeff Carter, I'd uh, expect that to not necessarily be a morale issue. The Minnesota Wild with Gallagher. Okay, so all these guys are on expiring deals. Joe Pavelski. Joe Pavelski. Fits in in the bottom six forward lines, apparently, but it's Joe frickin' Pavelski, man. <laughs> Just keep, keep using the Chicago method. Of uh, bringing the band back together and hoping for the best. Although the more appealing option there is definitely Brendan Gallagher. And putting him in on the second line could be pretty damn interesting. Montreal, Philip Deneau, he's currently hurt. So that sucks. I'd have to see for how long. Uh, Shaw, I mean, eh. Paul Byron would fit in well on the second line, but probably not who we want. Barkulak, I mean, defensively, it's still just not looking all that good, and like we have that many options. Nashville, hello. One nice and shiny Roman Yossi, please. Fits in well on our first forward line, go figure. Five years at 8 mil. I mean, if Brent Burns retires, that'd be a hell of a deal to pick up. Ryan Ellis, we have no info on right now. What about Eckholm? Who has been terrible this year, but would fit in well. Interesting. Interesting. 
Ekholm could work. Chase on, not so much. Kyle Turris, not so much. Dadnoff, we already tried that. Bjugstad, you follow. Ryan Johansson, not with that much time on your contract, buddy, even if that is a morale issue. Huh, and then like Yarncrook, Brower, and Stafford. So there are some names. I did not want to hit that button either. There are some names that are intriguing for sure. New Jersey, who do you have? Coleman, who scored that friggin' goal Blake Coleman scored the other night. Oh my god. Tom Kuhnhockel for the Islanders. Bailey, Eberly, Koivo Levo, the other Sebastian Ajo. Let's see here. So Levo, meh, Koivu, meh. Eberly and Bailey have both been pretty damn good. But they both have term. They're very good contracts, though. Relatively cheap, especially when you factor in. I mean, yeah, Bennington and Anderson, someone's got to go. So, the, you know, these could be one of the two to replace them. The Rangers. I mean, Granlund, no. Keandre Miller's probably not ready yet. He's in about the same spot as our other options. The Sens, nobody there. Philly, nobody there. Pittsburgh, nobody really there outside of McCarthy. So, overall, I mean, Colin for defensemen, Colin Miller in Buffalo. Calgary, they have a lot of interesting options for a couple of different reasons. But, you know, like TJ Brody and Mark Giordano, they don't really fit in all that well with the current team that we have, if I want to keep that third pairing together the way that it is, which I do because they've been successful. In terms of like that high-end talent to bolster up the defense, I haven't really seen it. There's a potential low-risk, high-reward option in the Mesnikov. Minnesota with Gallagher. I mean, Niskanen, eh. Pavelski's there if we wanted to you know, explore that option. Nashville is interesting because of Yossi, Ellis, and Ekholm. I'd say Ekholm in particular. And the Islanders have two forwards with Bailey and Eberle that are also very, very interesting if we wanted to push Derek Stepan down to the fourth line, which could work. And I mean, fourth line or Derek Stepan just kind of shows how solid the team is. To take a look at the Preds, so Ryan Ellis is done until early March. Philip Deneau is out for the rest of the regular season. I think those are the two big injuries. So I'm going to leave it there. I want to hear what you guys think as far as what could be done with the team, should be done with the team, in terms of potential trades. And just to get one more look at what the squad has done thus far. I mean, again, very happy with the top three. Relatively happy with Hurdle. Bjorkstrand's done well. Gambrell's done well. Stepan, though, does have 30 points on the third line in 55 games. Pushing him down to the fourth line might not be necessary. I mean, I know Carlson True and Goodrow haven't done that well, and I think we could look at calling up a Noah Gregor or a... God, who was the other guy? Who was the other guy? I forget your name. It was Zach Gallant, uh, who has a ridiculous physical category. You know, we could give one of those two guys a chance on that fourth line to fill in. But that is by far the weakest line on the team thus far. And defensively, I mean, again, it's just we need additions to the top four. At least one. Hayden Flurry, there's an argument for him staying, but he'd be an even better depth option. And then goaltending-wise, I think we stick with the top two and just try to make the best of it. But I want to hear from you guys before we make these changes. So I will see you in the next one where, again, we'll be pushing for the division title a playoff spot, and let's hope to God it's not three years in a row of just outright disaster.